415 will be our first horse, 415.
14 minutes, first horse, 14 minutes out.
Well, if you have just joined us, a very, very good afternoon. Welcome here to Las Vegas, Nevada. We're getting set to see the first one come forward in just a couple of moments' time. And we've got some great talent focusing here in this competition. Olaf Peterson Jr., our course designer, built some great courses already this week. We'll see what he's got in store for these guys in just a couple of moments. Uh, but of course, great to have you across the FEI social media platforms. If you're watching on FEI Facebook or FEI YouTube, don't forget you can get involved with the conversation let me know where you're watching from if you've got any questions any comments good luck messages then you can pop them in the comments box on there and if you want to have a look at the start list the result list or any of those fun things you can find it on longinetiming.com but we'll take a look now at the runners and the riders that are going to focus here in this one round competition. Sophia Siegel is going to get us underway. Caitlin Campbell's already had a win here this week. It's a very fast horse and Sun Warrior. She's going to be adding the pressure on. Skylar Wireman, great young talent. Mark Watering's got a couple of nice horses at the moment. And we can't rule out Connor Swale, who ranks within the world's top 20. Cassio Rivetti, no stranger to the West Coast. He's got Arisa's Vidal in this one. Robert Blanchett, the amazing Chardonnay, winners of the World Cup in Sacramento not so long ago. Katie Lowry, she's had two wins here already this week. Simon Schroeder's in there. Uh, and of course, riders can have two rides in this. So Skylar Warman will be returning, as will Sophia. Uh, Connor Swale as well, got a second ride in there. Dara Kenny, always quick. That's a nice horse. Vanessa Mannix has got a new horse, but she's gelled with that one so quickly. Nicole Honert's in there. Uh, Katie Lowry coming back with a horse. We've seen her jump at Spruce Meadows as well. Uh, Kama Godek jumped the World Cup with Connie at Washington. This is going to be so fast. It's one round directly against the clock. Well, we're going to be getting underway here in just a couple of moments' time. Here's our first one coming down to join us. While the stage is set, we are ready to get underway now here. Once again, best of luck to all involved. Some great athletes coming forward in this one round competition. It is directly against the clock. And it is going to be Sophia Seagal and her first ride. This one is a girl. They were second in the four star Grand Prix at Thermal this March. Last year in Sacramento, Sophia was second in the four star World Cup qualifier there. And I know she really wants to qualify for World Cup finals when they head over to Saudi Arabia in April. That's fence number one, though it's the vertical that gets them underway. They can be as tight as they like through here as they roll back round towards... Oh, that was... Oh, it's gone. I thought she was going to be lucky. That's the Oxer at two. Down to the long side and towards the fruit machines at fence number three. Now they roll back here and they really have to set up for this vertical at four. Left-handed... On that bending line as they come down towards the Longine double. Two strides through there. It's vertical to Oxer. Through 5A, 5B. Triple bar at fence number six. And that's really a setup fence for this vertical that comes at seven. And then getting a little bit of power back in the engine as we come down towards the Oxer at eight. Round to quite a committee line now. Another double. This is Oxer coming in. One stride out over the vertical. And then we ride forward for this vertical at fence number 10. Three efforts left from here. Back to the long side we go. Down towards this oxer at fence number 11. Taking a little check down towards the vertical at 12. And then this is our final fence on course. The dice at fence number 13. So 69.98 is going to be the time on the clock. Four faults recorded there for Sophia and A girl. Time allowed in this one is 81 seconds, but do remember, this is a competition where it's one round directly against the clock. So we're going to see some, some tight turns in there for sure. Big hello to everyone who's joining us on the FEI Facebook page, on FEI Jumping. I'm having a look at the comments on there. And don't forget as well, if you are watching on there, do hit share. Let all your friends know that they can join us you can tag them in there as well or of course you can share us into any of the equestrian groups but becky's watching from upstate new york uh, lucy's in montreal 
Shauna Curtis says greetings from Ireland. Alison's in Brooklyn, but let's get Caitlin Campbell underway next. She rides a horse called Sun Warrior. This is a nine-year-old gelding by Flexible. Caitlin was the winner with this horse yesterday in the Three of the Kind Speed Classic. And she used that ride as a bit of a warm-up for today. Worked out really well for her as she landed in the winner's circle. And this horse really prefers having a little bit of pace and just keeping that nice forward active rhythm. Whoa! Thought she was going to get away with that. Oh, that's a shame because this on paper would have definitely been one of the favourites in here today for sure. Caitlin's a very competitive rider. She's another one we'll see in the World Cup here on Saturday. And who knows, could a fast four fault round end up picking up a minor place in this competition today? We'll have to wait and see. But Caitlin's a very competitive rider, got a very secure lower leg as well. And she's very small in height, but Caitlin can ride pretty much anything you would sit her on. Oh, it's gone as well. So it comes round to the final fence. And it's going to finish up on eight faults today. 68 one zero and eight there for Caitlin Campbell of the United States of America. Finishes up on eight. But that's a nice horse. As I mentioned, you know, a win earlier in the week. And today, just finishing up on the eight. Great combination, that pair. Skylar Wyman, great young talent. Boy, she rides some amount of horses across the disciplines here. Skylar Wyman and Tornado coming forward to be underway here. And Tornado's a nine-year-old gelding by Diorado. It's out of a Chaco Blue Mare. They were third in the $100,000 two-star Great American Grand Prix. It hits Del Mar this summer. Won the under-25 overlay there as well. This is a horse that Skyler got from Nick Hannis back in June. And their first show in Temecula, the Alino Ferrucian show, they were fourth in the welcome there, fourth in the $25,000 speed, and tenth in the Grand Prix. Now, Skyler relatively new to the FEI division. She jumped her first World Cup in Sacramento this season, but you know, the amount of horses she's ridden and the amount she's won through the American system, always one to watch for sure. Having a quick look on the FEI YouTube page. And we've got Jen Dickinson tuning in from New Mexico. Let's see who else we've got on there. Tessa Martin's on there. Rodent Razor, good to have you there as well. The old grow mayor. And if you are watching on the FEI Jumping YouTube channel or, of course, on Facebook on the FEI Jumping page, get involved with the conversation. Any questions, comments, let me know where you're watching from. But great to have you involved with the conversation. And you can see already that Skylar is super competitive. She's getting some great turns in here. And this horse is just nice and active, really covers the ground. Little rattle there. Looks like she's got away with that. Remember, under the rules, that fence would be faultable until she crosses the finish line. But she'll be wanting to hope that doesn't happen, that it stays in the cups. And if she can stay clear, that would really add the pressure on for the rest. This is a nice, compact, modern horse. Oh, has to really hustle out that corner. Come on, Skylar, one to come. Is this our first clear? Yes, all the way. 65 44. Skylar Wireman. Tornado. First of her two rides in this one. Jumps clear and sets a standard. And that was a good time. You know, three guns so far. First couple had rails. But she is faster than anyone we've seen. Clear otherwise. Hi to Abby, just joined us uh, from Lexington, Kentucky on the FEI YouTube page. 
Tessa watching from Massachusetts in the US. I could never spell Massachusetts. Aaron Chapin says, hello from California, go team Ireland. Betty's watching in Uxbridge, Ontario. Joe's watching from Vale in the Oregon Wildlife Foundation there. Natalie watching in Montreal. But now we've got Cassidy Keith on board. We saw Cassidy ride a different horse in our previous competition here this afternoon. And interestingly, the time allowed has been reduced as well. So it started off about 81 seconds, now sits at 76. And you wouldn't expect that to have too much of an effect in this sort of competition, because it is one round against the clock. As I mentioned, you know, Cassidy was really riding some, some good rounds, not just earlier this afternoon, but on the opening days of this event. And she's been riding this one for a few years now. They know each other really well. They won the U25 Championships in Thunderbird a while back. And actually, at that same venue, have won two Grand Prix there this year as well. Two left. Not far away time-wise. 65.44, time to beat. Let's take a look. 64.95. She is faster, and she heads straight to the top. Cassidy Keith there, and Havana now leading the way for Canada. That pushes Skylar Wireman down into second. Sophia Siegel on the four faults and heading down into third place. Long way to go, though, about 38 to come. Great to have you all with us, keeping me company as we make our way through this one. But we're going to see some great sport, and it's a great opportunity to have a look at the athletes that, you know, will feature in the Longines FEI Jumping World Cup here in Las Vegas this Saturday. Kama Godek now. 12-year-old mayor. First to two rides for Kama. Joins us from Lexington, Kentucky where she was showing this horse in the FEI competitions there. Ooh, little rattle. You can see this horse goes in a bitless bridle called a hackamore. For those that are new to horses or new to the sport, that means it doesn't have a bit in the horse's mouth. The pressure comes on the pole at the top of the horse's head and across the nose. Kama just keeping this one nice and active, but then just catches that rail coming in. Ah, it's going to be on eight at the moment then. Down towards this last fence and finishes on the eight faults. 67-33, eight there for Kama Godek and Charissa. Kama's got another horse to come a little bit later, though. But at this stage, Cassidy Keith still out in front. 64.95 to beat Skylar Wireham in second. And Sophia Siegel sitting in third place. Hi to uh, the Blues Queen watching in Michigan. Heidi's watching in Maine. St Duck, more or less, is uh, watching in Atlantic Canada. The Canigal Mind says, my daughter shows in Lexington quite a bit. And Brianna Nicholl is watching in Scotland, where I'm from originally. Oh, I've got to say hello to uh, Talal, uh, watching in Kuwait as well. I think Kuwait might be the furthest away we've had anyone comment so far. Monica's in France, the old green mare in North Carolina and the United States. And for anyone watching in a different time zone, thank you for staying up. And I hope you're going to stay with us right the way through to the end. Let's get our next one underway, though. Connor Swale. 
Vital chance, still a rock. World number 20 at the moment. And this is a 14 year old gelding by Diamond de Semely. This is a horse we've seen win World Cups last season. Been building this horse back up nicely and had some really nice rounds and placings at Spruce Meadows over the summer. Recent wins and try on as well. But you can never say enough good things about Connor. You know, if you want to watch a real great horseman in the saddle, someone who's reactive, who's practical, who gets the job done, but is also just as soft and relaxed and just gives the horsey so much confidence. Trina Delisser is watching in Jamaica and has just commented on Facebook Live to say Connor Swale all the way. You can see Vital Chance having a little bit of a play. Connor gets as close as he can to the triple bar, sets up nicely for the vertical. A great piece of riding down to the Oxer. 64.95 on the clock. That's the time to beat. Catches the rail, though, sits on four now. But I'd imagine he's going to be the fastest four fault round we've seen. And again, a fast four could still pick up some good money in this. 60.68 uh, over four seconds faster than Cassidy Keith, who leads the way, but has that rail on course and heads into third at this stage. Connor Swale and Vital Chance Dillarock for Ireland. Having a quick look through Facebook again and saying hello to Doris watching in Richmond. Good to have you with us, Danny's in Connecticut. Haley's watching in Kenosha. Sean also in Connecticut, and in Ocala. Betty says, are there any more Canadian riders to come? Uh, yes, yes is the answer. So don't move, Betty. Canada well represented here. Peyton Cranenball on track now with Garibaldi. Peyton's had this horse for a couple of years and he used to be a great partner for Clea Cadell. Whoa, early front bar on that Oxer there. But Garibaldi's helped Peyton accomplish so many firsts. Her first Grand Prix at the beginning of the season. Lots of good results in Temecula. And at the Seaside Equestrian Tour. Now they're doing their first FEI competition here in Las Vegas. But he's a really fast and careful horse. He's honest. He's brave. It was a real shame for them to have a rail down. But, you know, their first week of FEI competition as a pairing. And we always talk about, you know, the difference between riding indoors and outdoors. And on the West Coast, it's it's even more, you know, different because they just don't have many indoor shows here on the West Coast because of the weather being so good. Mm, just a little bit flat down there. You'd want to be using this corner now. Inside leg, outside range, just bringing things together. And takes down the last fence. You know, these fences come at you so quickly. I thought Peyton did a very nice job in there. You know, first week of FEI competition. I don't know if we'll see it again in replay, but sometimes as she, as she lands, you could see, you know, she was a little bit on the horse's neck with her hands, and it takes maybe a stride to, to get that contact back. And I think sometimes, you know, indoors, that, that stride can be the difference because you've got no room to actually, you know, rebalance and get organised. Jacqueline Atkinson coming next in. Centigraph BVR for the United States of America. Gordon Razor says, does anyone know when you walk the course, do you account for speed when you plan your strides between fences? Well, it is a set speed in the competition. 
This one's running at 350 meters a minute, which would be quite standard for indoors. So you don't really take the speed into account too much. What you do take into account when you walk in these courses, though, is that it's almost impossible to turn at 350 meters a minute, especially depending on the horse that you're on. You know, someone like Kent Farrington or McLean Ward, absolutely, they can turn it God knows what speed every minute. Um, but, you know, you've got to take into account, can you keep traveling out of the corners and around the turns? And if not, then where are you going to make up the time? Jacqueline not having the best round today. I think she just needs to, you know, get rebalanced, get organized, and just try and give this horse a little bit of confidence for the rest of the round. I think this is where I'd be altering my plan a little bit, because you know you're out of contention. So you really just want to use the room, take your time, and just keep the balance, keep the rhythm, and just try and work on those lines of communication. It's looking a little bit unhappy in its mouth today. See those time faults starting to come into play. Another rail comes down. Uh, finishes up on 20 today, 83 4 0, but hopefully Jacqueline will take something away from that round. Think about what she could do differently. Finishes up on 20 and 83.40. Cassidy Keith though still holding on to that lead, 64.95. Skylar Wireman in second, 65.44. And then Connor Swale in third, fastest to the four fault rounds on 60.68. Uh, right, let's get Mark Watring underway. He knows this one quite well. It's called Limbusini RC. Mark's a face we've seen here at this event in the past as well, but the horse is a 12-year-old gelding. So horse he's already taken to regional championships earlier in the re year. Real early fence for him today. But we've seen him jump this one in the World Cups before. As I mentioned, he knows this horse quite well. He's been jumping this one for a couple of years now. We've got just around 30 left to come here. Remember, it's one round directly against the clock if you've just joined us now. And at the moment, fast four fault round could get you in the money. And you know, for some of these horses, I mean, this one has been in the ring. There might be some that haven't yet jumped this week. And to be able to jump in the Longines FEI Jumping World Cup here on Saturday, which is the Grand Prix of the event, they need to have completed another round. Uh, again, Mark's not in that position. He's already done that. Box is ticked. Oh, but the final fence comes down for him today, so he's going to finish up on eight faults. 72 on four and eight heads into seventh place. Just having a quick look over on the FEI jumping Facebook page again, and we've got Emily and Derek cheering from Ottawa and Canada. And Canada. Uh, Sarah Blankenship watching from Lexington says, it makes me miss riding so much, can't wait to start again. Hope you're back in the saddle very soon, Sarah. Uh, Lisa's watching in Leicester in England. I'm going to be flying back to England on Monday. I've been at shows now for about eight weeks away from home, so looking forward to that flight. Hayley Kohler says, hi Adam, looking to fire that other groom you had with you. Yeah, this morning, uh, if you head along to my Instagram page, search for Adam Cromarty, um, I was down there in the stables this morning um, with another groom who's looking for work. Although I think he's probably uh, got a job. Mark Wahlberg, the movie star, his daughter's riding at the show. So we were down in the stables this morning and took a picture to see if anyone wanted to hire us as a groom. Um, so you can see that on Instagram if you just search for Adam Cromarty. Right, let's get Chris Sorensen underway. Emperor Claudius, someone earlier was asking if there's any more riders for Ireland and he rides under that flag of the Maple Leaf. Although he's now based in the Netherlands. And we've seen this pair in Nations Cup competitions a couple of times. 
We've been shown recently at two star level in places like Shanti over on the European Tour. This is by Zalando, this horse. It's 13 years of age now. Out of a Temple Sandor mare. No, oh, catches the triple bar, back bar, and then you can see him really have to use that upper body, take a check, get balance for the versicle, and then find enough energy in the tank to get down to the oxer. Mm. Just not having the day that we'd normally expect from this partnership. That's a shame. Chris and his family produced some great horses. Well, maybe just lost a little bit of confidence through there. So second disobedience is going to be the end of the road for Chris Sorensen and Emperor Claudius for Canada. No change to that leaderboard then. Cassidy Keith out in front, 64.95. Skylar Wireman in second and Connor Swale in third place. Hi to Judy who's watching in Florida. Katie just joining us on Facebook Live in Chicago. Abraham in Ethiopia. Ivana says, cheering from Toronto. I was just in Toronto last weekend for the Royal Winter Fair, the World Cup leg there. It's an amazing city, Toronto. We had sold out stadiums every single day. Always love heading to Toronto. Jean's watching in Queensland, Australia. Jackie says, how crazy are things in Vegas with the Formula One race? I'll tell you in just a second, but first let's get Cassio Rivetti underway here. And he says, Vidal 8, 11 year old Galding. This horse used to be ridden by Mariana Alario and was recently purchased by Monic Farms and Casio. Finished third in the World Cup Qualifier Grand Prix at Sacramento just a couple of months back. But yeah, someone asking there how crazy things are in Vegas. We're in the South Point Hotel, which is just off of the Strip. We're probably about 15 minutes from the Strip here. So to be honest, nothing really that much different. I know there is a watch party here on Saturday night, so after the World Cup, people will be able to go and sit in one of the the big rooms here at the hotel and, and, and watch. It's such a massive hotel with cinemas, restaurants, bowling. I mean, pretty much everything you would need under one roof. Um, but I'm heading down to the Strip tonight, so I'll have a look. But I think a lot of the Strip's changed. There's lots of fencing and grandstands and stuff built. And I watched the opening ceremonies last night, but it does look pretty crazy down there. Ah, it was a shame for Cassio. Cassio's got a lot of riders that he trains on the West Coast and, and horses as well, of course. He's a rider that's campaigned all over the world, and this one is just a little bit careless through there. You know, Cassio set him up nicely. Tonight on YouTube says that this horse is so over chestnut, he's almost burgundy. Got some great colouring. And he says Vinal 8 will finish on 8 faults today, though 68.46. has got some nice ingredients in there and we'll keep an eye on that partnership I'm sure we'll see them do good things as the days weeks and months continue on Elisa Braz next to go Cardenta van Meerhoff another one riding here for the United States of America uh, two clears at the moment Cassidy Keith the fastest 64.95 leads and Skylar Wireman second 65.44 with a faster time of 60.68 and a rail four faults as Connor Swale in third place Struck more or less as I was also at the Royal. It was lovely watching it in person. Oh, it's one of my favourite shows at the Royal. It's a great way to end the year. I mean, I've got to go to Texas as well, which is another great event. Comes up in uh, d later in December. And I love coming to Vegas because it's so unique. Being in oh, just overcooked that line a little bit. That was a shame. I just let the horse relax now. Give him a nice little, little pat, and then get organised and come back round. So the ring crew are going to rebuild that. She's going to get six seconds added into the time. She'll get four faults for the refusal. Here she goes, nice and organised. 
and now back on track. So I think what she's got to do is think about that original plan now. Think about keeping that rhythm, keeping everything nice and relaxed. And use this as a little bit of a setup for the next time that we're going to see her in the ring here. that back bar. Of course, there's plenty of blood. That energy just causing a little bit of flatness sometimes. Twelve is the total there for Elisa Bros and Cardenta. That was a, a shame there for Elisa, a little mistake. having a quick look over at the FEI YouTube page again. Uh, Anne's watching in Arkansas. B-Rose says, hi, watching from America. It's a big country, B-Rose. I don't know if you want to be any more specific than that. And Tessa says, how much does a show like this cost in the US? It really depends on the class shirt you're riding, but you know, for something like this, you'd be looking at you know, a couple of thousand dollars for the week. Uh, Nico Gamboa, another great young talent. NKH Warrior is his ride. Second in the 140 at the end of September in Sacramento. This is their first international as a pair. Obviously, we've seen Nico jump international before, but first time he's jumped this one here. And uh, he's just back from the Pan Am Games, actually. He had another October Hill horse there, NKH Mr. Darcy. This one's got some good lines in there, including Cassini. Oh, and then really has to prepare for this. That line's just so connected. You know, you've got to get close to that triple bar. You've got to have that rhythm and got to have that kind of connection and communication. If you don't have all those ingredients, it's so easy to take a rail. And the material here, just so delicate. But, you know, their first international competition as a pair. Nico Gambo, a nice young rider. Great horse as well. And using that as a bit of a fact-finding mission, I think. I think a Nico will have taken a lot away from that round. Just taking a quick glance over at the FEI jumping Facebook page. And we've got Cody Shank on there saying hi. From Seattle, Cody there with Julia. Good to have you guys watching. Heather Piat Fisher with us as well from Pennsylvania. Nick says hi from Wellington, Florida with Felice Kenneth and Emma Marlowe. Heidi's watching in upstate South Carolina. And Dara Kenny there just about to get underway. Dara's aboard this 12 year old stallion. Winners of the 414 Five Star Grand Prix in Traverse City back in August. And this is a horse that Stephen Moore from Ireland brought the horse along for about three years up to the 150 level and Dara took over the ride. It's owned by Vlox Show Stables and Dara. I wonder if Teddy Vlock's going to be eager to get this one because this horse has all the ingredients. Dara obviously one of the best in the world and you know, yeah, the horses had a rail. But again, you know, coming indoors, lots of atmosphere out there today and no matter what this horse does, I'll I'll still I'll still like him when all is said and done. Yeah. 
see it's a very gymnastic type of a horse. You've got to love the way that Dara rides. Such a great horseman. Uh, eight faults, 65-76. a couple of rails there but you know you look at that horse and the way it goes and there's just so much to like Sophia Kinsella says Michael W says hi from Temecula good to have you guys with us Ava Butler watching in Oxbridge Ontario Carl's enjoying the coverage that's Carl Humphrey watching on Facebook good to have Hayley Kolar watching as well Ava Butler says yay Cassidy talking about Cassidy Keith that leads the way at the moment. Michelle's watching in Australia. I think it might be a different day in Australia now. It's very confusing. Right, let's get our next one underway. Robert Blanchett. The horse is called Chardonnay. Of course, we saw him in Sacramento with this one. Won the World Cup with the horse there. It's a 12-year-old mare. Also winner of the Derby at Spruce Meadows this year. And this is a horse that Robert's had for years. Really loves the horse. Really believes in her. They've done so much together. And I think, you know, this is definitely going to be one to watch when we get here to the Longjean FEI Jumping World Cup in Las Vegas this Saturday. Sometimes this horse can have a little bit of a, a struggle through, through distances and through doubles. So you sometimes, you know, see him giving them a little bit of encouragement. Especially in those double combinations. Robert runs Blanchette Equestrian with his wife Tammy. And they've got twin daughters who are always running and dancing around the show as well. Oh, it just flattens there. Comes down towards the last. But, you know, if you're here, if you're watching the World Cup on Saturday, that's a pair I'd just keep a little eye on. 64.59. Caught the time. He was faster, faster than Cassidy Keith. But then picks up a rail, and he's always got a little bit of a cookie or a treat for his horse. As soon as they come out of the ring, you know, the horse expects it. But you think so much of that horse. Again, if you're watching on Facebook, don't forget, hit the share button, tag any of your friends in there, share it to any equestrian groups, let them know that they can enjoy the action here in Las Vegas. If you are watching on YouTube or Facebook, let me know if you've got any questions about this competition, about this sport, about jumping here in Vegas or anywhere else. If you want to just say hello and let me know where you're watching, you can do that as well. Ah, now, that is a big shock. I've seen this pair at Spruce Meadows all summer long. We've had some great placings together. This is Cara Caruso and Katie Lowry. She's been on winning form here. I know she's excited to go and see... Kate Ur uh, Keith Urban tomorrow night as well while she's here. He was part of the opening ceremonies for the Formula One yesterday. A lot of the artists that were part of that opening ceremonies have got events coming up in hotels or nightclubs over the next few nights. Derek Kenny's a big Formula One fan, so I'm sure he's got something organised. This is a horse that's called Elvis in the barn, and one that Katie's had for a while now. He's got a bit of character, actually. He's a bit of an escape artist in the stables. A little bit wild in the warm-up. But he gives everything in the ring. He's got a little bit of his own way of going as well. He goes in this rubber snaffle with no martingale on there. But Katie's already had wins here this week. Not a bad time, 68.99. Katie Lyrie and Kerry Caruso finish up on the four. Just that very, very, very early rail on course. Nix is watching from PEI in Canada. Charlie says FEI versus Formula One. Surely this is the, the best horsepower there is. 
but the race on Saturday night is taking place quite late. I think it starts about 11 o'clock, so we'll be well finished with the World Cup by that time. Uh, Simone Berg and Cooper coming forwards. Next to go here. Still chasing the time set by Cassidy Keith, 64.95. And I think this show must hold a, a special place in Simone's heart. I tell this story all the time when she comes in the ring, but you know, back in 2021 when she was here, she came out the ring after jumping her first World Cup qualifier ever and said to her groom and friend Brent that she thinks they should try and qualify for Omaha 2023, the World Cup finals we just saw earlier in the year. And she did exactly that. And this has been a great horse for Simone. She's had the horse for about three years now. Oh, second part of the double. Really has to take a check and make the horse wait for that oxer. But again, I think we'll be seeing her in the Longines FEI Jumping World Cup here this Saturday night. Oh. And again, she'll use this as a bit of a fact-finding mission. She'll work out what the plan is for the rest of the weekend. That was Simone Berg and Cooper finishing up on 12 faults here. 69.88. Hi to Joe in Gainesville. Selena in St. Petersburg, Florida. Kelly Connor watching in Rising Sun, Maryland. Joanne's watching in Oregon says, are you here in Vegas this year? Uh, every year at this time. Yeah, we are. This is the week this horse show's gone for, I think I've been here eight or nine years. And it's always so unique because we're at the South Point Arena and everything's under one roof. We stay in this hotel. You get an elevator down in the morning. You nip to one of the 12 restaurants for breakfast. There's people already gambling down there at half past seven in the morning. In fact, all night. The barns are open all night long. There's two massive cinemas. There's bowling alleys. There's a spa. And I don't think you can do it anymore, but you used to be able to order room service to your horse's stalls because the stalls sit underneath where the competition arena is. You go downstairs into the stables. They're all air-conditioned, underground. Really nice facility, actually. But it was quite funny when you used to be able to get room service delivered to your stalls. Anyway, Camila Rudia is on track. And Deus van de Kreisehak for Colombia. He won the two-star silver Tour Grand Prix at Blenheim's show in Samuel Capistrano back in the spring. Camilo moved to California this year and has created a great little business for himself with lots of wins nationally. And he's had this horse for years and the horse has got so much experience around the world. They know each other very well. It's got caught up there, takes the back bar. Second part comes down. So we're on eight at the moment. Final fence for them. Cracking time as well. 65.98. Time was good enough to head into third place, but the rail, or the two rails, is going to move them down to eighth at the moment. Still got just over 20 combinations to see. Hi to Amy watching in Oxford, Pennsylvania. Don's in Middleburg. Ari Bempe, I hope I pronounced your name right, watching in Nigeria. Great to have people joining us from all around the world. Enjoying the All-In Speed Classic here at the Las Vegas and National Horse Show. If you're watching on Clip My Horse or the USCF Network, great to have you along. And if you're not able to comment on Facebook or YouTube, if you want to get involved, you can send me a message through Instagram. Just search for Adam Cromarty on there. You can send me a message. I'll keep an eye on my phone as we're making our way through this competition. But we're going to get Charlotte Jacobs underway next. Rincola Melcion for the USA. Charlotte's got some nice young horses here as well that we've been watching her jump. This is a 10-year-old, this one, though. 
They've been showing in Tryon at the FEI level last month. And this horse is from Ireland. It's got great breeding. Same lines as Flexible and another great horse called Delight. Charlotte's got a lot of young horses at the moment. And she's been bringing them up the ranks from, you know, the young jumpers all the way through to the FEI competitions. But she's a, a talented rider. We've seen him jump over in Europe on quite a few occasions. Got a nice secure lower leg. Very elastic through her arm as well, allows the horse to really travel through the air. It still just maintains that contact. So as she lands, she's still got that feeling down the rein. She can set up the next fence. And that was super smooth all the way around. And look at the time. 60.36 straight to the top. Over four seconds faster today. Charlotte Jacobs for the USA now leading. Clock in Farm says, does this horse jump like flexible? I think it does a little bit, you know. Marge says, she's fast. You're right, Marge, she is very fast. Has Charlotte Jacobs done enough? We'll have to wait and see, but Cassidy Keith goes second. Skylar Wireman heading down into third place at the moment. Jill Humphrey and Traumatic BF next to go. Just had a big win in September in the Grand Prix at Sacramento with this horse. Second in the Grand Prix at that same venue earlier in the summer as well. Jill's got a very nice business, GH Sport Horses, along with her sister Jan. This is a 12-year-old gelding by Connor. Clark Eventing on YouTube says Charlotte was... And then I think they're explosive emojis. But she was. She was explosive. Lucky Star Equestrian says, love a catty quick little chestnut. What a cutie. Spots the World says, that horse is a gorgeous jumper. Uh, Trinite says, the rider's eyes up the whole time to the next jump. She's a great rider, Charlotte Jacobs. And so is Jill Humphrey. You know, she's produced some good horses over the years. Always great to have you guys involved with the conversation, watching on the FEI social media channels and FEI Jumping Facebook page and, of course, on the YouTube channel. Keeping an eye on those chats as we continue on. And Also, hi to Lisa, who's just sent me a nice message on Instagram saying she's really enjoying the competition. You can do that as well. Just search for Adam Cromarty. Send me a message on there. But Jill really using that upper body with some good success so far, just to keep everything balanced and to take a bit of a check down to here. See, this horse might be a little bit strong. It's got a grackle nose band or a figure of eight nose band, as there no one here in North America. Keeps everything under control. And that was a very good try there from Jill. I think she'll be very happy with that horse. Chromatic BF and Jill Humphrey for the US head second, 62.06. Pushes Cassidy Keith to third, but Charlotte Jacobs still looking good at the top, 60.36. Marie-Val de Longem next to go, Echo de Verton. 13-year-old gelding by Vagabond de la Pomme. This is a horse who's seen shown by Gregory Watherley in the past. And Marie showed him to World Cup and in FEI competitions all over the world. You know, we've seen her over in Europe in Lyon and Saint Tropez, Cronenberg, now here in the US. And some good finishes in Desert Horse Park recently.
Wow. Wow. Yeah, I think she's going to be frustrated with that, to be fair. But that double's going to be built. She gives the horse a nice little pat, a little bit of reassurance. And then Marie's just going to get herself organised, get a bell, and then she'll just pop round nicely. You can see our little shake of her head there. It's a little bit frustrated. That was a shame. So I'm just going to come back round there. Yeah, jump through this double. This is a nice quality horse. A few people on YouTube appreciating the music that they have when the horses come in and out. They've got a DJ here called Lexi Looker. So she's uh, providing the providing the soundtrack to the jumping. But what a quality horse this is. Marie, very nice, elegant rider. And just a one costly mistake there. It's going to be very costly though. 79.99, total of 12 there with jumping and time faults. Got a midway drag bait coming up as well. Hi to Jan Stevens, who's watching in Winnipeg. Nice to hear from you, Jan. Just sent me a quick message on Instagram. Jennifer Denith just uh, sent me a message, and it's a video of Mark Wahlberg. And I don't know what he's saying, because you said so, did you? But yeah, Mark Wahlberg was at the show earlier. I was down in the barn with him. And if you want to see that picture again, you can head to Instagram, search for Adam Cromarty. I put that picture up there a little bit earlier, and I'll be posting, you know, more behind-the-scenes stuff as the week goes on. So if you're on Instagram, if you want to add me, you can do that on there. Just search for Adam Cromarty. Right, we're at the halfway stage. So let's take a quick recap. We've got Charlotte Jacobs leading at the moment, 60.36 our leading time. Jill Humphrey in second, 62.06, and Cassidy Keith in third on 64. 95. So that's our top three at the moment. There's a couple of people are mentioning on the horses, you know, when they're going round and you see that they're all clipped and then there's a little patch of hair just behind the, the rider's leg. And that's to shave, you know, any little scratches or anything from the spurs because, you know, we clip these horses all year round now. And sometimes when you are clipping them all year round, it can just make the skin a little bit sensitive. Um, so it does help, you know, just leaving that little patch on. It gives them a little bit more protection. And it saves having to wear, you know, one of those big belly bands that you see some of the horses having on. But the ring crew won't take too long, and then we will be back underway. The ring crew do a great job here. They really are the backbone. And the grooms as well. The grooms are absolutely amazing. Uh, it takes a real village, you know, to keep these horses on the road. So, big shout out to all the all the grooms. And if anyone's got any other questions, just while we're in this little drag break here, any questions about the sport, the competition, the venue, being in Vegas and jumping, the World Cup tour. You can try some general knowledge questions if you want. I can always make up an answer for you. Um, but yeah, great to have your company as, as we head through this. It's been great to see you know, how many people are watching from all over the world. You know, we've had Nigeria on there, we've had Australia on there as well. The rails are going back in. And then we've got our next bunch forward. A reminder as well, if you want to have a look at the start list, at the course plan, the live results, the timetable for the rest of the week in this arena, Lots of other fun stuff. You can head along to longjeantiming.com. Longjeantiming.com. You can see the spelling of Longjean all around the ring. Um, and if you click on the event and obviously the day, you'll find the, the, the course plan and the start list, the results. Everything's on there. 
and you can you can follow along see how people have got on see who's left to go we've got some great talent in the wings still to come forward you know having a look down the start list simon schroeder who's very successful here on the west coast we see him all over the place as well though lily keenan who's won a world cup skylar wireman who got us underway jump clear with a fresh ride comes back with another connor swales got another horse dara kenny chris Sorensen coming back laura height sean cassidy vanessa manninx caitlin campbell lots still to come some very fast ones as well this could go right to the wire today a huge thank you to everyone who is getting involved with the conversation love that little bit of interactivity i worked in radio for a long time so it's you know taking me back to my radio days now that i can combine it with with sport as well Big hello to Anderson Lima, who's watching. Anderson, a great course designer that we see on the World Cup circuit. And at Blenheim shows in San Juan Capistrano and lots of other places. But nice to hear from him. Someone asking what time the World Cup starts on Saturday. It's going to be at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock local time. Obviously, we're on the West Coast. So uh, on the Pacific time zone, so you'll have to work it out from there but seven o'clock local time again that timetable all those times available longinetiming.com with the start list results and all the other stuff as well that was Doris Hudgens who was asking on Facebook live Laurie Jones watching on YouTube says hi from Idaho Vera's watching in the Netherlands tonight says it's a perfect day for a long class it's noon here in Melbs which I'm thinking might be Melbourne and she's got a few hours before she has to go to CBD. Don't know what CBD is. Clock End Farm says they went through a Formula One phase when she was a kid in the 60s. But I've got no idea who's good now. The only one I remember is Lewis Hamilton. I'm not sure if it's still available. And don't dare leave watching this to go watch it. You've got to wait till the end. But last night I was going to go down to the opening ceremonies down at the Las Vegas Strip and... It looked like it was going to be an all-night thing. And obviously we're starting relatively early here and it goes relatively late. And Tickets were so expensive as well. I thought, do I really want to be out late tonight? So I didn't. But then I watched the opening ceremonies on YouTube and actually it only lasted about half an hour. Um, but it was great. They had so many artists there and DJs. Uh, Will I Am was there. Kylie Minogue was playing. Uh, Tiesto was there as well. And it might still be available on YouTube, the Formula One opening ceremonies. But... It certainly brought a lot of people. You know, there's 30,000 people at the opening ceremonies. They've got practices tonight. Big races on Saturday. I think it's about 11 o'clock it starts because they're actually racing down at the Strip. So I think they've made it quite late so it doesn't affect, you know, the hotels, the restaurants, the, the shows, the Circus Soleil and all that stuff. Uh, Victor says, break her over. It is only a break, Victor. Do not dare go anywhere. We're about to be back underway. Horse loves you on uh, YouTube saying hi from Long Island, New York. Kiki's watching in Ireland, 10 past one in the morning. Hope you can stay up till the end. Jose says, uh, from South Carolina, I get to see all the riders from the West Coast. Yeah, you've got some great competition over on the West Coast. Charlie says, watching in Richmond, we need you to announce the low amateur sometimes so people can comment on our riding. I'd love to. I love doing the amateurs. I was just at Toronto and uh, I was helping out with the ring announcing when we weren't doing the, the evening TV show there. And uh, I love doing the ponies. Ponies are so fun to commentate on, you know, when they're in the ring and you see them give their ponies big hugs when they finish. That's really what it's all about. Nix is watching in PEI Canada, Monica's in France, Jill Walton in London, Ohio. Clock in Farm in Northwest Georgia, in the Tennessee line.
And you can just see at the back of your frame there, that's the warm-up. And it's actually really handy. It's quite a big warm-up, and you're so close to the ring. You know, sometimes once you've warmed up and you've got to go on a bit of a, a journey to get down to the competition ring, you feel like your horse is almost isn't at that perfect point by the time you get there. But here, it's just a nice, easy commute, you know, straight down the tunnel and you're in. Hi to Jane Babcock, just sent me a message on Instagram to say go Char from Mom, Joan's twin sister Jane from Vermont. Well, thanks for your message, Jane. And again, if you want to send me a message through Instagram, you can do that. You can just search for Adam Cromerty and you'll be able to find me on there. But we are picking up that action again. We're getting ready. And the best of luck to everybody else involved here. They know they've got to try and pull it out of the bag. They've got to be faster than 60.36. Simon Schroeder, though, always very competitive. This is Charlie Redwine CS. He's just making a little bit of a bit of rain back there. Just making sure horse is listening to him before he gets underway. This is just an eight-year-old, this one. It's by Corner Obolensky. It's out of a Voltaire mare. He's such a unique way of going, but him and Simon got on so well and have been showing together since he was in the Young Jumpers. Jumped the World Cup in Sacramento last month and have had lots of success at Grand Prix level nationally at Desert Horse Park, at Temecula, and of course Blenheim Echo Sports and Samuel Capistrano. Simon, as I mentioned, you know, very competitive. He's had such a variety of horses over the years. Ah, takes a rail down that line. Now, the fastest for a fault round at the moment is Connor Swale. He had four faults in 60.68. And he sits in fifth place. So if you have a rail early on on course, this is definitely worth just keep moving forward, sticking to your plan, and trying to get home as quickly as possible without having another rail. This is a young horse, Simon, giving him a little bit of experience in the ring today as well. Uh, finishes up in 71.33 and 4, so Simon Schroeder heads into ninth place at the moment. John on YouTube says, where are we in the order? We've got about 20 left to come. And remember, LongjeanTiming.com has those start lists on there and the live results if you want to try and keep up. Death's Head Moth Ranch, great YouTube name, by the way, um, says it's 7 a.m. where I am, planning on waking up at 2 for the dressage. So 7 p.m., I think, planning on waking up at 2. Hopefully you can stay with us through to the end. Laurie Jones says, ponies are so fast. They are. I love ponies. Uh, Anne Wagner in Arkansas now, but from the Washington, D.C. area. Used to go to the Washington International. Was there a few weeks ago. Right, let's get this next one underway. Skylar Wireman back with another right. This is Katoki for the USA. This horse is 17 years of age, loving life. It's by the famous stallion Katoki. And Skylar had her biggest win yet in the four-star speed up in Sacramento a few weeks ago. This is one that Skylar's had for a few years. Got the horse from Justin Resnick. He's getting a little bit older, but, you know, he doesn't realise it. No one's told him. I don't know, I think I've told this story before, but this horse is a bit of a miracle. The horse actually broke his pelvis two years ago. Went on to recover from it and went blind in his right eye. Was able to get his vision back. This horse is unstoppable. And Skylar's got so much great natural feel. It's very reactive. You, know, you can see if the horse lands with a little bit too much energy, she gets that upper body back. She takes a check, reels everything back in. Thank you. 
Mm. Couple down, but you know when you look at that clock, it wasn't a bad round. 63:26. Time was good enough for third. Two rails though, mover from third down into tenth place. The second ride there of Skylar Wireman. That's Katoki for the United States. Marge says it's a bit of a movie story about that horse. It absolutely is. To come back from a, a broken pelvis. And when you think, you know, if you've got a horse with a slight rotation through its pelvis, how difficult it is to keep the horse, you know, sound and happy. The fact that this horse broke its pelvis and Skylar and her team have managed to get the horse back and jumping as well as he is. I mean, it's pretty amazing and a great testament to her and her program and the, the staff they have at home. Uh, right, let's get Lily Keenan underway next, a rider who's won a World Cup here in the past. This is Organa van der Grandel Z for the United States of America. Back to defender title after winning the World Cup here. And this is a horse that she's had since it was six, about six years now. So competitive in the ring has all the blood that Lily needs him to have, but then he's nice and quiet at home and her mum can, can ride him there. Ah, that was a real shame. But this is a proper partnership, definitely one to keep an eye on when we're here for the World Cup on Saturday night. And time is not bad, is it? 63-61, finishes up on four. Lily gives the horse a nice pat and thinks, that's me set and ready now for a World Cup here on Saturday. You know, the bigger and the more technical the tracks are, this pair really come into their own. Hi to Beth von Breck, just sent me a message on Instagram, watching at Night Seifert's farm in Texas, or she's from Texas, watching in Wekulkala, and says, see you in Fort Worth. Yeah, I'll be there for the World Cup. That's a nice World Cup as well, Derek Braun and his team putting that one together. It's a strange one for me though, because I fly in just to do the World Cup. So I fly from Manchester in England, fly in, do one class, fly back. Uh, Ainsley Wright, next to come, 19 years of age. Diamonto GTZ, the 11 year old by Diamond Decemily. It's called Monto in the barn, this one. Jumped some of the FEI competitions in Sacramento a few weeks ago, was seventh in the, the welcome week there back in October. This is one we saw in the Youth Championships at Traverse City and Ainsley's trained by Jill and Jan Humphrey in NorCal. Did a little bit of a tour in Florida earlier in the year as well, but really building up that experience. with a lot of energy down this line ah, and catches up with her at the end that line really is about adjustability and having that good rhythm as you come in he's just feeling that blood a little bit and just flattening occasionally another one there comes home Finishes up on 12 fault, 66.06 there. Ainsley Wright for the United States of America. Marcello is watching in Chile where the Pan American Games were held. Looked like a great event actually.
Once again, a huge thank you to everyone who is getting involved with the conversation, whether it's on the YouTube chat or on Facebook Live, on the FEI social media sites there. Keeping an eye on the FEI jumping page on Facebook, keeping an eye on the FEI YouTube channel. Let me know where you're watching from. If you've got any questions, comments, good luck messages, stick them in there. Or you can send me a message on Instagram. Just search Adam Cromarty on there. And we'll get Connor Swale underway next. Back with a second ride. This has been a great horse for Connor over the last couple of years. On the Fantastic Four at Spruce Meadows in July during the Pan American Tournament. He's won the World Cup qualifier in Fort Worth with this horse about a year ago. He's had some good results with this horse. It's a 16 year old gelding by Count Granis. Let's get Connor on course now. This horse has always had lots of scope, lots of ability. So Connor's wearing a belly band to protect his horse. He's a great horseman, is Connor. I feel like I say that every time he comes in the ring, but it's just so true. Recovers nicely. Keeps moving forward. Remember, 60.36 is that time to beat. That's the challenge here. Takes a check, sets up, gets his leg on, keeps the horse thinking forward. This is quite quick, you know. Let's have a look. 60.01, the lead changes. Connor Swale and count me in for Ireland. Now heading to the top of our leaderboard, Pushy Charlotte Jacobs to second, and Jill Hemphrey heads into third at the moment. So it's Connor Swale, Charlotte Jacobs, and Jill Humphrey, first, second, and third. What a clever little horse, though. See Connor really kind of just getting out of the way, lets his rein slide, gathers them back up so quickly as only he can do. Wow, that's going to add the pressure on, isn't it? 60.01, new challenge, new time to beat. Marge Little Boy says, do the horses that compete in the Pan Ams have to quarantine coming into the States? Uh, no, no they don't. As far as I know, uh, they're actually kept in a bit of a bubble when they go there. So they're all kept in quarantine, they travel in quarantine, they arrive, the stables are in quarantine, they compete in quarantine, they travel back to the airport in quarantine, um, then of course they fly back uh, and then they're fine. Monica's talking about Connor Swales saying amazing horse and rider and says such an athletic horse Tonight says our faith in Connor never misplaced. Tessa Martin says, Yay, Connor, Henry Yang, great horse, mechanical mind, super job, lucky star, equine, nicely done. Monica says, Yes. And Wagner says, Why, wow, very quick. Rodent Razor says, I think he's got it. Charlie says, A call accomplished in the turns. You get the idea. There's a lot of love for Connor Swale on the social channels here. Hi to Jennifer Sovak watching from North Carolina. Jacqueline Atkinson didn't have the best ride with her first horse, comes back here with Haval H, second ride for her, and representing the United States of America. Had some great finishes nationally in Colorado this year. See them in the FEI divisions at Blenheim Equisports back in May and at Sacramento a few weeks back as well. Horse has quite a lot of nice scope. Hmm. And the fastest four fault round, 60.68. That is also Connor Swale. Yeah. 
Still just on the four faults at this stage. Yeah, I think she'll be happy with that. Not a bad round today. 70.64, but nice and smooth there for JJ. Heads into 11th place. Hi to Anne M, just tuned in from Norway. Hi to Monica. She's saying nice things. About me, but I'm not going to read them. Because they were nice. But I do appreciate it, thank you. Has Connor done enough? I think he might have, you know. What do you think? If you're watching online, let me know. Has Connor Swale done enough to take this win? Bruno Dinaz de so Reeves comes forward next with Gucci and Mustard for Puerto Rico. Bruno was the ACO leading rider at Blenheim Equus Sports this year. They've had a lot of success nationally, placing in about every Grand Prix they've entered. Really starting to move up the levels, though. Did their first World Cup in Sacramento a few weeks back. And Bruno's got a good string of horses, but really thinks this is one in a million. Bruno says this one has all the scope. He's careful. He's got a lot of personality. And he says this one just keeps getting better and better. It was a shame having that fence. But again, you know, this will be a really nice setup for them. I think we're going to see them in the World Cup here on Saturday. Just a couple of rails coming down. You can see this horse perhaps isn't the, the friendliest towards other horses in the warm-up. You can see he's got a little bit of a, a red dot on his bridle there, just sitting on the brow band. So that just lets the other riders know, just to kind of not get too close. But he's been moving that one up through the grades. It's great to see them out, you know, jumping on the World Cup circuit now. Just a couple of careless little mistakes there today. But, you know, I think, you know, he's going to be jumping the World Cup with this one for sure. That horse is ready. Doris says, are there any off-the-track thoroughbreds competing in World Cup? I don't think there are this week, Doris. And I'm sure, you know, you do see them. But more in the eventing scene that you see the off-the-track thoroughbreds. You know, where you kind of need that that ability to keep on going and going and going over the eventing tracks. That's really where we see the off-the-track thoroughbreds. Derek Kenny, one of the best in the world for sure. He's got California Pie coming to join us. Dara riding for Ireland. Clock in Farm thinks Derek Kenny might do this, might take the win. We shall wait and see. Dara's uh, currently ranked within the top 20 in the world, though. He's a man we've seen at Nations Cup Finals, Europeans, the Olympics. He's had this horse since the start of the year. They placed well at Spruce Meadows. Not only is he going to be a great campaigner in the World Cup here on Saturday, knowing Dara and knowing that he likes the Formula One, I think we're going to see him down there on the strip later that night as well. Oh, that was a shame. But again, you know, fast four faults in this one at the moment. It looks like you might just pick up some money. So you've got to keep moving forward. Stick to that plan. Mm, as soon as you have eight faults, it's going to be off the leaderboard, sadly. Uh, 65 73 the time two down eight faults there for ireland's dara kenny in california pie but again you another name to look out for in the world cup here this week what a year he's been having monica says another beautiful gray tessa says yes stunning 
Mechanical Mind says that they're bringing up a, a four-year-old off the track thoroughbred in eventing. You don't see as many as you used to, but you see a lot of them in the under three-star level. I know I was at the Maryland five-star, which is a relatively new five-star three-day event in Maryland, funnily enough. Um, it takes place over my birthday weekend in October, but I was there and I remember from commentating that you do see a few off the track thoroughbreds up at that event. Back to this event though, and Sophia Siegel comes back, joining us now with the second ride for her. This is unchained for the USA. She took the under 25 win during the $50,000 National Grand Prix at the beginning of the season at Desert Horse Park. She's trained by Harley Brown in Northern California. I know her goal really is to qualify for World Cup finals this year, which are taking place in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. That'd be a big journey. She's bringing up Unchained through the levels. Her World Cup horse, I'm guessing, would probably be A-Girl, who we saw go first. But Unchained has really come up the ranks over the past few years, and Sophia's been bringing them along, doing a very good job with them. so far oh. hopefully I didn't just jinx her there she's just had that rail oh on the final fence as well 67.04 is the time she'd stayed clear with that time she'd have had 6th but she's off the leaderboard sadly having the 2 rails Jose Luis is saying, who's the course designer? It's Olaf Peterson Jr. is the course designer of this one. I think he's done a good job. I can't say that too loudly, though, because he's sitting about two seats down from me. But keep an eye on that horse that you just saw, Sophia, jump, because she's going to do some nice things with that one for sure. Not too many left to come now. We're down to about the final ten. Our next one is having a quick drink, a bit of rehydration, and then we'll be coming forward to join us here. Again, if you have just joined us on Facebook, feel free to hit that share button, tag your friends, share it to our equestrian groups. They've still got some good sport to enjoy. This certainly isn't over yet. And if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, get involved with the conversation. You can use the comments box. Let us know where you're watching from. Any questions, comments, good luck messages, all that stuff pop them in there or you can follow and send me a message on Instagram just search for Adam Cromarty always good to keep it as interactive as we can though bringing the horse world together because we've got people watching from Australia what else did we have we had one from Jamaica earlier just all over the world Britain Ireland France just having a look down this list, obviously all over North America, from Canada, the USA and Mexico. Nigeria. Right, let's get Laura Height underway though. HHS, fast forward for the United States of America. Laura's just purchased this horse. It used to be ridden by Mikey Pender of Ireland, and Mikey had great results with him internationally. Laura competed with him for the first time in Sacramento, and they had some good rounds. They were just outside the ribbons there. They're still very much getting to know each other. And Sacramento is another nice facility on the West Coast, but it's almost a hybrid or outdoor venue, I think. I mean, you know, it is indoors. You know, it has got a roof on, but one side's open, and it's such a big indoor that... You don't really get the same sort of related lines. The fences don't come up quite as quickly there as they would, you know, here or at Washington or Toronto. <sighs> can she recover from there, though? Oh, one more to come out this line. And then she can rebalance. Ah, caught the back bar. It was kind of always on the cards there as she came in. and It's just a case of waiting and seeing. But sadly, did catch that back bar, so sits on four at the minute. Thank you. 
Going to finish on eight, though. 69.09 there for Laura and HHS fast forwards. Colleen Hoffman watching on Facebook Live. Colleen's a, a judge I get to work with at Spruce Meadows and, of course, on other venues all over the world. And she's down in Florida watching with uh, Heidi, who's an FEI farrier, and her wife, Missy. Good to hear from you guys. Shame you're not up here with us. Chris Sorensen's next, though. Good luck to him. I think Connor might have done enough, though. 60.01 is going to be really tough to try and catch in here. Chris has been riding this horse for several years now. He was third in the $75,000 welcome at Fourth Worth at the end of the last year. They've kind of been competing at all different levels this year, you know, from one star to four star. But we've seen them over in Europe. We've seen them in Wellington. Horse is 13 years old by Kankara, out of a paramount mare. You know, most of these riders are also great horsemen, and you would never really vary from your plan too much to try and catch Connor unless you thought you were sitting on the kind of horse that could go, you know, like, like Connor went. So you can see Chris is thinking forward, he's moving forward, but he's not going to do anything too silly to try and just catch Connor today. He's given this horse the best ride he can. He knows this horse has got a naturally big stride, really eats up the ground. But also just using that adjustability on that related line. It's another one going in a hackamore, a bit less bridle. She's using that pressure across the horse's nose and on the pole. That's where the control comes from. And some horses go really well in hackamore. Some absolutely hate it and will stand straight up. But for the ones that prefer it to a bit, it can be such a useful piece of kit. Come on, Chris, this is a cracking round. You've got one fence left in your home. Yeah, nicely done. 67.26. Good piece of riding there. You know, as I mentioned, he didn't go flat out. He didn't do anything silly to try and catch the ones at the top. He just stuck to his plan. And I would think that is a really nice setup for the World Cup here on Saturday. Horse took everything in his stride. It was nice and smooth all the way around. He just maintained that great rhythm. Jennifer Sovak says, so awesome to see American riders compete. Tell you what, Jennifer, Team USA are flying high right now. Got a lot of talent coming up the ranks. Good quality at the top as well. And Canada's, you know, catching up there too. They've had a bit of a, a rebuilding time recently. Sean Cassidy having a little look around. Normally when you see riders do that and you're watching them on TV or on the screen, and what you can't see is the video boards are right above their head. And that's where the riders see the countdown, the 45 second countdown. And seeing that countdown would be the indication that the bell's gone. So if they aren't too sure if the bell's gone and they look up, they're not looking for inspiration, I promise you. They're just looking to see if the bell's gone, if the countdown started, and, of course, how long they've got left on that countdown as well. he felt something coming down that line he tried to kind of make a correction and find a stride but just didn't quite get there on what he wanted just wasn't anything kind of workable Sean's had some good successes with his sources though recently he got the ride from October Hill at the beginning of the year and had a five-star Grand Prix win at Thunderbird over the summertime, and Sean's always been a catch rider, so you know you can get on pretty much anything and get a nice tune out of them. Finished six yesterday as well. This horse has been going super good for him. It's 13 years of age, this horse now. It's called NKH Cento Blue by Centadel out of a Chaco Blue mare.
But, you know, Sean's given this horse a nice round. He's going to finish with confidence, ready to come in on Saturday night and hopefully put in a great performance. Ah, but the final one comes down. So 29 total, 96.81 and 29 total there for Sean Cassidy. Just had a message on Instagram from someone called Jack Nash. Good to hear from you, Jack. Says, inquiring minds from Lexington want to know how many times have you played Sweet Caroline more or less than Omaha? <laughs> Much less, actually none at all. Uh, they may play it on Saturday night um, when we've got a crowd in for World Cup, but I'm only doing TV here, so I won't know. That'll be a complete surprise to me as well. But yeah, if you're at World Cup Finals in Omaha, we loved a bit of Sweet Caroline. We had everyone's flashlights on, their phones out, the lights down, and we were singing along. Uh, we did the same in Toronto, actually, just last week at the Royal Winter Fair. But thanks for your message, Jack. If anyone else wants to get in touch through Instagram, you can search for Adam Cromarty on there. Or, of course, if you're watching on FEI YouTube or Facebook, if you want to get in touch there, you can do as well. Right, let's continue on then. Because we've got some really good ones still to come. 60.01 though, still the challenge, still the time to be beaten. Olivia Clever now with Connor 69. The 10 year old by Connor out of a contender mare. Olivia's had the ride since last summer. Had some great results actually. You know, when you look through, she was second in the Two phase at Desert Horse Park. Six in the 150 welcome at Tryon. Had some good finishes in Sacramento a couple of weeks ago. Second, I think it was there in the welcome at four star level. Whoa. Those triple bars, you really got to get in quite close to the front. Try and be straight. But it recovers nicely down that line. down towards the last and we'll finish on the eight fault 69.73 let's have a quick recap of that leaderboard shall we Connor Swale out in front 60.01 Charlotte Jacobs of the US sitting second 60.36 and another US rider Jill Humphrey in third 62.06 but Ireland flying high at the top with Connor Swale out in front. Not too many left to come. Here's Lahar. Had some good results yesterday. Finished fourth. A relatively new ride this one. Lahar. It's a 12 year old by Verdi. Vanessa Mannix on board for Canada. Nessa just back from Toronto in the Royal Winter Fair. Had some very good results there. Vanessa trains with Connor Swale, and I know they like coming to this event. They get to, to juggle horses and golf, and maybe even some Formula One, who knows? But Vanessa's you know, really got to know this horse very quickly. And I think she can have quite a lot of trust with this one. You know, she's able to keep moving forward, keep that activity in the stride, and not have to set up too much for the fences. She's just got the, the confidence that she can allow this horse to, to move forward, to travel and he'll still get up in the air as well. Keeps moving forward here. Whoa. Nicely done. There's a bit of a setup to this one. Remember, clear round is going to guarantee you, you know, some prize money here, I would think. One to come. She's not far away. 60.01 to beat. She's not going to be quite that fast, but 63.25. 
is still a great effort there. Vanessa Mannix heading into fourth. What an exciting new horse that is for her. Lahar and Vanessa Mannix for Canada goes fourth, 63-25 and clear. Therese Hutchins says, who's the course designer for this competition? Someone asked this earlier as well. It's Olaf Peterson Jr. He's an FEI level four, so an Olympic level designer. Builds quite a bit here on the West Coast, but is still based in Germany. His dad, one of the, the legends in the course design world, Olaf Sr. Struck more or less says, love watching Vanessa in Toronto. Vanessa says, nice, beautiful job. The old grey mare says, nicely done. Charlotte Jacobs is back. Thomas Court, Billy Patrick for the United States of America. We've seen them show in the two-star level at Tryon and Traverse City, as well as internationally in Ottawa and Dublin. Saw them at Hickstead. And Charlotte bought this one as a six-year-old from Greg Boderick. It's an Irish sport horse, was selected as one of the few Irish sport horses every year to compete at the championships. But it's got Balabuduro A lines in there. And now as an eight-year-old Charlotte's making a real nice job of just, you know, being very patient, bringing the horse up through the levels, ensuring confidence throughout. And yeah, obviously frustrating there to have a rail, uh, a rail but you know, coming into the shrink, things coming up really quickly for the eight-year-old. And Charlotte's just going to keep that nice smooth rhythm all the way around. She's thinking about, you know, producing this horse for years to come. Mary Barak on YouTube says that Charlotte's horse is stunning. As I think I've said before, you know, it can be frustrating, of course it can, to have these rails, but you've got to look at the quality of the animal that she's sitting on. And Charlotte's quite analytical, so she'll be heading out today, she'll be kind of focusing on every round. Might even watch this back, so if you do, hi Charlotte. Um, but yes, you know, she'll, she'll look back at this round and, and just kind of calculate, is there anything I could have done? But really, she's making a very nice job of that young horse and... The way that she's producing these young horses, I think she's going to end up with a real top string. Nicely done there for Charlotte. I thought she gave it a very nice ride. Yeah, it's on 16 faults, but we're going to ignore that. We're going to focus on the quality of the ride and the quality of the animal. Just having a look through Facebook live chat on the FEI jumping page. Uh, Nathalie says, way to go, Vanessa, with some Canadian flags. Yeah, she rode a great round, didn't she? In fourth at the moment. Top three are unchanged, though. Connor Swale for Ireland leading. Charlotte Jacobs on a previous ride, sitting in second. And Jill Humphrey in third place. 60.01, time to beat. Getting down to the final few here. Nicole Honor with us now. Kalaskis, the 11 year old by Jermac. Horse owned by Zoom Gallagher and used to be ridden by Cara Chad, but Zoom was fifth in the four star Grand Prix at Thermal back in March with him. Nicole Zoom's trainer and just started showing the horse in the past couple of months. Nicole just keeping this horse again active, moving forward. Ah. Looked like Nicole just took a bit of a check out the corner. The horse went ever so slightly hollow and just evaded the contact a little bit. Going to finish up on four today. 68.02, four there for Nicole Honor. Representing the USA. Sydney Price asking on YouTube how many left to go. There's about five left to come. 
Malibu Angel says, beautiful ride, Nicole. Good to have you with us, Malibu Angel, watching on Facebook Live. Five left. It's flown by this class. Don't forget, more competition to enjoy throughout the event. Every single class from the three rings here available on the USCF network, powered by Clip My Horse. It will be back on YouTube and Facebook on Saturday. I think it's about 11 o'clock local time, but again, do check longjeantiming.com for the full listings. Caitlin Campbell on course, another very competitive rider. This is Polina. Horse she rides for the United States. Catches that front rail on the Oxer. Oh, she's got a little bit hung up there. Not like this pair, actually. I think she might just, yeah. And I saw that, I thought her hand's going to go up in the air because, you know, this horse and her have had some real good results. She's going to retire and then just have a bit of a courtesy fence on the, on the way out. But, you know, at the start of the season, they were second in a big national Grand Prix at Desert Horse Park. And they've had some great national wins. Shane Sweetenham had the ride of this previously. But just not their day. You know, Caitlin's already had wins here this week. This horse certainly doesn't need to you know the experience in the ring. A 14-year-old who's jumped numerous clears, had numerous wins. Just not quite getting the feeling that, that Caitlin needed there. The horse just pulled her into that oxer. It's a nice recovery. Connie 409 in Kamagodek next for the United States of America. First of the final four. Well bred. The horse's two brothers have jumped to Nations Cup and World Equestrian game level. There's a nine year old mare. I would say still quite low mileage and a little green for her age, this horse. Kind of dabbled in the World Cup at Washington and I think she'll have taken quite a lot away from that round. So the hope would be she's just going to try and keep that nice active rhythm in here. Not try and catch Connor at 60.01, because that would be crazy. Bit of an angle through there. Clear so far. Hammer brings over quite a few nice young horses from Europe. Oh, catches that rail coming in. You can hear her using her voice. Just to rebalance and organise, help him keep that cancer in a nice active but controlled rhythm. Yeah, and finishes up on just the one coming down for faults there. 68.53 for Kamigodek and Connie representing the USA. Still in the money with that one actually heading into 12th now as we get down towards the final few. Nico Gamboa, that's where we're heading next. Second ride for him, NKH Vittorio S. He's a real good rider, Nico. We see him at Pinnock down in Texas, just back from the Pan American Games. This is the first week we've watched him jump this horse internationally. The horse has done a little bit in Europe with a couple of different riders. It's a nine-year-old by Q Verdi. Go 
Christina on Facebook Live is saying, why are a few of the riders having an issue with fence number three, which is a kind of jackpot fruit machine fence? And obviously Nico didn't. Nico rode it perfectly, and this horse just floated on over. But I think the reason it's caught a couple out is, is really just the way it's sitting. The actual fence itself is fairly inviting. It's actually ascending that fence, so the front bar slightly lower than the back bar. It's quite an inviting uh, easy to jump fence. What makes it difficult though is just the, the sort of bending line it's on first of all. It comes at you very quickly and it's also sitting right on the arena wall and that kind of front row next to the fence is completely full um, and there's also I think a camera guy there as well down at the bottom. So there's quite a lot to see and I think a few of the horses are just kind of peering as they come down there. Uh, that was a good round though from Nico, wasn't it? Heads into 8th place, 67.54 into 8th there for Nico. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can kind of see that from your camera angle that you're watching at home, but yeah, next to there, you know, there's the camera and uh, a whole row of people about three inches away from the horse's head when it jumps over that fence. So if it is a, I don't know, a bit of a nervous horse, a younger horse, maybe just not quite used to being indoors and, and having the people so close, I think that's the the number one reason that we've seen that, that fence cause an issue. But again, you know, the angle, the fact it comes at you quite quickly, those sort of things are all going to play into that. Uh, right, let's get Kitty Lowry underway with Django. Django feeling a little bit good in here today. This is a big horse, a big jumper. Winners of the Three Star Grand Prix back in match at Desert Horse Park. But this is a homebred. He's half thoroughbred. He can be a little bit anxious. And it's been quite a long road for Django. It's been a little bit hard to bring along. But I've seen Katie jump this horse at Spruce Meadows. And they've had some really nice rounds together. It's by Lardano, this horse. 12-year-old gelding. Katie does a very nice job though. Oh, look at that upper body. That upper body saved her down that line. That was a good piece of riding. You could see how reactive she was. In a way, I think that kind of tighter inside turn gave her the best possible hope for a good setup into that double. You know, using these kind of rollbacks is almost like riding a little circle. But this horse, you know, just feeling a little bit bloody today and a little bit full of energy and power and you could see Katie working hard throughout using that upper body taking a check bringing the shoulder back just saying come on listen but that horse a real testament to her you know the homebred that she's produced all the way up through the levels I think we've only got one left According to my, my abacus here. Um, yeah, we've got one left to come. Connor Swell leads, we know that. 60.01. Charlotte Jacobs second. Jill Humphrey sitting in third place. And the last to go is going to be Peter Petschdeck for Austria. Annabelle van der Posthaus. Peter's a good rider. Got a good business with his wife Natalie in Texas. Had the ride on this one for a few years. They won the three star Grand Prix at Split Rock, Kentucky just last month. This horse is always trying. And this is one that Peter always saves for, you know, the, the important competition. So I think he'll be using this one as a bit of a setup for the World Cup here. Using the tools that he has at his disposal in this horse to get set up and hopefully pick up some prize money as he works towards the World Cup here on Saturday. Monica's watching YouTube live and seeing another beautiful grey. And this is a horse that Peter absolutely loves, I can assure you of that. Sixty point two one. I think Connor's done it. But he's given this horse a great ride, isn't he? 
Whoa. That was like the long jump. But look at the adjustability he then had and the, the scope and the power. And it's got everything, that horse. 65 1 7. Peter Pechnik for Austria will finish in sixth place, in sixth. Before we give you that result, just in case a few of you are thinking it's done him off, uh, just a quick thank you to everyone who has been tuning in, whether it's on the USCF network powered by Clip My Horse, whether it's on YouTube or Facebook Live, it really has been great to be you know, involved with that conversation with you guys. You were all getting involved, asking questions, just saying hello. Um, so it's great to have that interactivity. So before we give you that result, I'd just like to say a big, big thank you to everyone who's been getting involved with the conversation throughout this competition here at the Las Vegas National. And, you know, this show's on every single year. So if you can, even if you can't be with us this year, because it's probably a bit late, but why not get in your diary next year? Such a fun trip, such a fun show, and it'd be great to see you here. Um, and again, if you want to follow along with any of the other competition, if you want to follow along from some of the backstage stuff, um, you can follow me on Instagram. Just search for Adam Cromarty on there. Uh, but for now, let's take a look at those final results. Here they are. Connor Swale, count me in, takes that victory. 60.01 is one of the best in the world, isn't he? Charlotte Jacobs, great young horsey she has that's progressing forward. Uh, will finish in second place. Jill Humphrey in third, 62.06. Vanessa Mannix rode a great round. Cassidy Keith led the way for a long time. Will finish in fifth. And even as we get into those four falters, there were some cracking rounds in there, some great times as well. But our ring crew now starting to clear as we get set for that prize-giving ceremony. And don't forget, you can enjoy all the action from all three rings at this event. They're all available on the USCF network, powered by Clip My Horse. We will be back on Saturday with more action covered on YouTube and Facebook when it comes to the FEI social media. I hope you guys can join us for that. Again, you'll have to work out the time depending on where you are based in the world. But it's 11 o'clock local time, Facebook and YouTube for that one. And then when it gets to the World Cup on Saturdays, I'm sure you know now, uh, that one only available on FEI TV, but you might just see highlights on channels like CBS Sports, um, maybe Sky, depending on where you live, maybe Eurosport, depending on where you live. But keep an eye on local listings because the highlights will be out there on TV early next week for the World Cup. Uh, I'll be joined by Katie Stazak for commentary on that competition. Um, and it'll be great to, to be with Katie again. Obviously, we do all the World Cups together, so she'll be flying in here a little bit later in the week. Maybe today, actually. Maybe tomorrow. Who knows? Um, but yeah, she'll be with me on Saturday night. And you can hear us both on, on FEI TV and then again on the highlights um, on various channels around the world. But they're getting set for that prize giving ceremony. You can see Alex Zulia, who's just out in the middle there. Oh, Alex stepping a little bit of a jog. Um, but she'll be getting things set and ready down there. She does a great job of pretty much managing this whole event. Robert Ridland is a, the the owner of Blenheim Equisports that puts this event together, obviously the chef to keep of Team USA as well. But Alex on the ground here, really pulling everything together for him. A few final thank yous as well coming in on Facebook and hellos and stuff. Uh, Christina, good to have you with us. Uh, Danny says, fun night it was, well, Danny, it was a great class. Diane says thanks. Uh, Patricia says thank you. And Carol as well saying it's been user-friendly, informative and exciting to watch. Well, make sure you come back and join us on Facebook again on Saturday, 11 a.m. Pacific time. A quick look over on YouTube as well. Again, so many people there getting involved with the conversation. Hi to Tim, who's just joined watching on there. Amber says good night from Alabama. I hope you have a great night, Amber. Thanks for tuning in. Hi to Jose from Aitken, South Carolina. Says congrats to the Irish. Rodent Razor says good night, everyone. Thanks for watching. But yeah, great to have every single person watching, no matter where you're tuning in. It's an exciting competition, and we're about to see that prize giving ceremony. Uh, if there's any last minute questions, you can fire them in just now. And then in just a moment, we're going to be handing over. To Oliver Kennedy and the arena crew, they're going to take us through the prize giving here this afternoon. The last rail's being removed, but yeah, make sure you join us again, 11 o'clock local time, 
on Saturday. Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Clip My Horse, USCF Network, FEI TV. It's all over the place, really. Um, and you can enjoy the rest, as I mentioned, through USCF Network, powered by Clip My Horse. It's from about 7.30 every morning right the way through to the evening in three rings. There's plenty of action to enjoy, and hopefully you'll be with us here in person next year. Um, but from the whole broadcast team, enjoy the rest of your day. We'll hand over now to Oliver Kennedy. He'll take us through the prize-giving ceremony as part of the arena crew when they're set and ready to do that, and you'll be hearing from him. But thank you once again to everyone who's been tuning in, getting involved, whether you've been commenting on Facebook, on YouTube, sending me messages on Instagram, all that stuff. Great to have you with me. I'm Adam Cromarty, and I'll speak to you again very soon. As the title partner and official timekeeper of the series, Longines is proud to be associated with the Longines FEI Jumping World Cup North American League here in Las Vegas. Longines' passion for the equestrian world dates back to 1869. Today, the brand is involved in the most important equestrian events around the world. On this special occasion, we highlight the official Longines watch of the event, the Longines Mini Dolce Vita line with its discreet profile, classic styling, and aesthetic variations that are at once timely and timeless. It's a masterpiece that exquisitely expresses in equal parts Longines quiet, luxury, and contemporary elegance. And now let's welcome in our uh, fifth place entry as we uh, salute the efforts today in our competition. We'll welcome in our winner, Connor Swale for Ireland and count me in. Connor Swale and Count Me In for Ireland take the victory today in a time of 60.01. Following them in is Charlotte Jacobs and Rinkula Milstein for the United States. In second, Chromatic BF and Jill Humphrey for the United States will finish in third. It's Canada's Vanessa Mannix and Lahar in fourth. And for Canada, Cassidy, Keith, and Havana will round out the top five. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we will salute the uh, winning riders, uh, uh, nation, home nation, with the playing of our National Anthem of Ireland, if you'd all rise and remove cover as we honor the nation of Ireland.
Robert Ridlin the, uh, will join us now as uh, he will step up to uh, make our presentation of the uh, win. Well, making the uh, presentation here for the uh, shot with uh, Connor Swale. Uh, next up, we will have uh, Robert Ridland step up to uh, present the uh, cooler to our uh, winning entry, Connor Swale. Our congratulations uh, to our winning rider. Our photo here as uh, we salute their efforts. Count me in. And now our uh, presentation party moves to the uh, second place entry uh, from the U.S., Charlotte Jacobs and Rinkula Nilsen. In third place, uh, it is Jill Humphrey for the United States on Chromatic BF, finishing in third place. In fourth place, it was Canada's Vanessa Mannix and Lahar on a time of 63.25. And moving down to our fifth place finisher for Canada, Cassidy, Keith, and Havana. And now, Connor, we will have you lead us on our round of honor, the victory lap led by Ireland's Connor Swale and Count Me In. Charlotte Jacobs and Rinkula Machine, Jill Humphrey and Chromatic, Vanessa Maddox and Lahar, and Cassidy Keith and Havana. And one more time for solo lap of honor to our winner, Connor Swale, and count me in for Ireland.
Check, check, one, two, check. Check, check, one, two. Check one, two, check one, two. Getting ready for the WCE. Coming up next as Olaf Peterson Jr. now has turned his uh, jumper FBI courses into the WCE warm-up. And we'll be moments away here from the walk. Check in with our paddock master, Jeremy Raleigh. And once again, the jackets are required here for the WCE warm-up.
All right, so we'd open the floodgates now. We are walking the WCG warm up. An expected 32 participating here in the warm up. Once again, our jackets are required here. And don't forget about the jog. It is at 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock in the lunging arena tomorrow. We'll do the jog for the WCE. Once again, a start time here posted by uh, Jeremy, our paddock master of 6.45, 6.45. Looking for our, everybody to get organized here, the order of go. Check in with uh, Jeremy, get that order go going. Once again, 6.45, looking for that first horse on the course. So once again, it is the warm-up here. It is a jumper type speed. As you can see, we have the star markers on it. It defenses one through eight, and a time allowed of 54 seconds. 